like to say good morning to everyone. I want to welcome you to the New Haven Church of Christ. We're grateful for your presence on today. We're excited about uh, this opportunity to be able to worship the Lord again in spirit and in truth. Uh, we appreciate the congregation again for just uh, making an adjustment uh, right on the fly. Uh, wasn't aware of this weather that has been just changing up here in Connecticut. It was uh, like 50, 60 degrees yesterday, and we got snow in the morning. And uh, our lot wasn't cleared, and we just want to make sure that everybody is as safe as possible. Believe me, I had preparations to be in person. Last week was, uh, I think, a great message that stirred up some folks, and we were just ready to get back into it again, and we had to adjust. But in spite of it all, God is good. We're grateful that everybody is uh, safe and in the comfort of their own homes. But uh, uh, as it has it at this point, we plan to be in person all next week. Um, we are, again, we're grateful for all of our brothers uh, leading us in our devotional part of our services on today. Uh, we appreciate the spirit in which they do it. Uh, we had, had, a, had a new face this morning. That's, that's Norman Newton III. So proud of NJ uh, uh, for stepping up. He was planning and prepar uh, in preparation to be in person. And then we had to do it online. So that, that take a little wind out of the sail. So it's nothing like being in person, uh, being with God's people. And uh, I'm grateful for our young men who did the training on uh, Friday night. Church, we've got some uh, stellar young people who have been uh, doing a great job in training. Next week, we're going to have a new guy and the week after that. So we're, we're going to give our young men a great opportunities to be able to serve in different capacities. And you're going to be seeing some changes within our congregation. And we appreciate all the men who've been working along with them, uh, Brother Stewart and others uh, who were there to give them support uh, over the weekend. Um, brothers and sisters, God is good. All the time, all the time, God is good. We're grateful for uh, to be able to be in receipt of another manifestation of God's grace and mercy. Every day he gives, uh, it's another opportunity to be able to serve him. And for that, brothers and sisters, you and I ought to be eternally grateful. He woke you up this morning. He started you on your way. He's given you the activity of your limbs, the ability to be able to put one foot in front of another. As you slumber, slopping and slept, he looked at you and said, one more day. And I'm here so, uh, to remind somebody who's listening to this broadcast this morning, if you've got a pulse, that means God still has a purpose for your life. We are continuing our series uh, based off of the theme uh, for this year in 2022, uh, Reach, Renew, and Refocus. Reach, Renew, and Refocus. We're still on the renewal portion. We weren't able to finish it up. Oh, last week, there was some good stuff there dealing with the church at Ephesus. There, there's still some, some meat there, and we can just squeeze out the essence there and uh, want to be able to uh, get all that we can get. Um, it, it, it's a church that we see some similarities, but Jesus gave a warning that could arrest their attention to uh, get back. The Bible indicates that they had left their first love, and we want to uh, dive back into that. And we appreciate, again, church, for uh, we know we've had a lot of things going on this past week with services and things, and uh, we had a great meeting with our young people between the ages of 18 and um, 30 or 18 and 29 um, on Thursday night. We got some uh, you know, great feedback from them, some of the things that they'd like to see uh, collaboratively within our congregation, and uh, they want some youth Sundays, and, and, and so they've talked about dress down days and things of that nature, and on some more Bible classes. So we got some new initiatives. We got some things to, uh, to assess. We met with the, the group uh, 30 to 55 the previous week. And then this Thursday, we'll be meeting with those who are 55 and older. So we're looking to get a perspective from every uh, group within our congregation. And we're going to uh, leadership meet together and, and seeing what we can implement to find ways to become better connected. We know we're in person some days and then we're or online, the others, but uh, we're trying to find the best mode of connectivity, and we are making a concerted effort and emphasis on our young people. The young people are our future, not in the future, they are our future right now. We need to do what we can to build them up uh, so that they can carry on the bloodstained banner of Jesus the Christ. Let us uh, dive into our text this morning, Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, we're going to begin at verse number 1. Revelations 2, verse number one, we'll reread for emphasis there. And the Bible reads, to the angel of the church of Ephesus, right? These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and 
that you cannot bear those who are evil. You have tested those who say that they are apostles and are not, and you have found them to be liars, and you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my namesake, and you have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. But this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. This morning, we want to speak to you again from the subject, <clears throat> reach, renew, and refocus. Uh, this morning, again, we want to uh, finish up part two of this concept of uh, renewal, one being renewed or Refresh. Well, what does the word renew mean, Brother New? Means to make new, uh, to restore to existence, to do it again, or to begin again. And I know uh, when it comes to our faith in Jesus Christ, there are some areas and some things in which we do need to renew. We need to renew our passion and our zeal for the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to renew our minds. And we also need to renew some relationships that have grown cold. As we talked about uh, previously on last week, uh, uh, we find the words of Jesus Christ who were uh, given to the apostle John who was exiled on the Isle of Patmos. And John uh, received a revelation while uh, this is a form of persecution there. And he's exiled and the word of the Lord had came to him. And Jesus says, I have a word for the seven churches that are in Asia Minor and he has a specific message for each church. And he starts with the commendation. Jesus indicates what they are doing well. And then he begins with some condemnation. And then he ends again with a word of uh, commendation. Tells them ways that they can improve to become better and be the light that God calls them to be. As we talked about several weeks pri prior to the, the church at Laodicea, this is one of the churches uh, that he indicates that he did not give any commendation to it all. He just talked about where they needed to improve. They said, we're doing fine. He said, no, you're naked, you're blind. They said, look, you got many misconceptions about yourself. And uh, he said, you have to be willing to change. Uh, what's different here about uh, the church at Ephesus uh, the church at Ephesus is one of the churches that are named that actually had a particular epistle in the Bible that was written directly to it. The church at Ephesus was established by the Apostle Paul on his second missionary journey. We find the emphasis stage of the church back in Acts chapter 19, where uh, Ephesus was an epicenter for uh, trade and uh, you know, it was known as one of the seven wonders of the world. It had uh, the, the place of the goddess Diana. They had the temple to the goddess Diana or Artemis, uh, if you will. And those, those names are, are transferable. She was known as the goddess of fertility. And, and known in that particular temple, there was a lot of lewd things that were going on. And, and to worship uh, the goddess of Diana, there will be uh, a sexual uh, escapades that will go on inside of the temple, throughout the temple. There would be uh, 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 women uh, that have breasts that are, that, are, uh, that are all throughout the course of that time. So you wouldn't have, uh, you would have some unsavory characters that will be in and out of that particular place. Uh, one commentator suggested that this would be a modern day Las Vegas, uh, if you will. But uh, you know, Ephesus was a, a, a great place for trade. It was also under Roman rule at this particular time, but you had a lot of people, but there were many, many influences. They were uh, gods to uh, many of the local, uh, the, the governors who were over the province of Rome there. You had gods of, of, of Greek mythology. And then again, one of the greatest was that of Diana. You had, had individuals who would come from all over the world just to view this temple that has been noted and heard about. But yet at the same time, you had members of the body of Christ, uh, the church in which Paul had established. And one of the things here about the church at Ephesus, 
Uh, Paul, uh, during his uh, second missionary journey, he stayed here three years. It, it's one of the longest tenures or the times in which Paul stayed at a particular location. There were many things that he also warned the elders. In uh, Acts chapter 20, he said, there are going to be those who rise up among you, not sparing the flock. You all have to be on guard. I know the nature in which we live. We know that this world it is secular in many fronts, but we must uphold the gospel of Jesus Christ. The church at Ephesus had some powerhouse preachers, beginning with the apostle Paul, and then uh, Timothy had been a stint in Ephesus. When Paul was writing to Timothy, he was at uh, Ephesus, writing to encourage him on how he needed to conduct himself. John, before he was exiled on the Isle of Patmos, many believed that he was doing his work in the city of Ephesus. One of the things, uh, so they had, Ephesus had a, a rich beginning as a congregation, and as Jesus uh, begins to outline in the text, says to the angel of the church at Ephesus, right, and many uh, suggest this is not uh, a celestial angel, but many believe that this refers to the church uh, leadership at that particular congregation. And he said, who, who holds the seven stars in his right hands in reference to Jesus Christ, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. And the seven golden lampstands represents the seven congregations in which Jesus is writing to. And it's amazing what we can notice from this. The Bible says, he who walks in the midst of the churches. And, and if we're a member of the body of Jesus Christ, the church that belongs to Christ, look, the Lord is in our midst. So it's important for how we govern ourselves, how we conduct ourselves, how we uh, labor and work together. Notice what Jesus outlines. He says, verse two, I know your works. <clears throat> I know your labor. I know your patience and that you cannot bear those who are evil. So this is a church, look, who labored for the Lord. This is a church who held fast to pure doctrinal teaching. And then he goes on to say, he said, you can't bear those who are evil. And you've even tested those who say that they are apostles and they're not. So they have fossil, false apostles back then, just like we have today. He says, and we have found them to be liars. He says, you have persevered and have patience. You have labored for my name's sake. He says, and listen, you have not faltered or become weary. He said, there's not even any signs that you are slowing down. In many cases, in many fronts, many will say to themselves, brother, man, this sure enough sounds like a model church. This sure enough sounds like a church that we need to be able to, you know, get in line with. He said, look, in the midst of all of the secular things that were going on around the church, they were still preserving the name of Jesus Christ. I know we begin to go up and say, said, man, I don't know what this world is come, coming to. We are so confused about so many different fronts. We're confused about our gender. We're confused about a political affiliation. We're confused about what God we ought to serve. Just like back then, there was a lot of confusion, but you had a church that was still willing to stand. And Jesus noted that. He said, you have been persevering. You've been operating with endurance and patience, and you have not quit. You have not gotten weary. And that's a message. That's a word for even members of the body of Jesus Christ today. It's important for us. I know that I know we're living in a worldly world. We live in the world, but we're not called to be of the world. We're called to be lights, even in the midst of the darkness at all. When it's not our job to blend in, God calls us to stand out. Amen. Sometimes you may feel like you're standing alone. That's why Christian kinsmen fellowship is so important for you to be able to realize and recognize. And when I come uh, to the church house, it's good for me to be able to see that there are still other believers who believe even on today. When I look on this Zoom and I see the number that's on the Zoom, that, that, that's a consolation to me that there are still believers in his name. When I look on the Facebook feed. That's a reminder to me there are still believers who believe on the name of Jesus Christ. That spurs me on to keep on keeping on. But there was one thing Jesus goes on to say to this church. He says in verse number four, this is the climax of the turning point. He says, nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. If you remember on last week, we talked about, uh, I gave you the scenario or dating or, uh, you know, if you're really into somebody, and, 
you 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 know you do all you can all the right things you say all the right things you 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 go above and beyond to win the affection of somebody that you're trying to capture their heart and then over time as, as the song would say you know the love can grow cold Jesus was expressing and saying to the church at Ephesus, he says, you've done all of this. Nevertheless, this is the knock that I have against you, is that your love for me has begun to fade. What I've come to learn and understand from this assessment of the text, they had the right doctrine. They had the right practices. They were living the right way, so they had the right belief system. They had the right practices. But their love for God began to grow cold. So that's why, and, and, and it's important for us to be able to understand as believers, I can go to church all I want. But see, the, the Christ of the church may not still be dominant in my life. Sometimes we can come to the point, as we talked about on last week, where we condition ourselves to continue to just go through the motion. Just like in the beginning, uh, uh, for those of you who are married out there or, or in a serious relationship, you know, uh, in the beginning, you know, over time, man, man, Valentine's Day, that's so important. That's so important. I know that's tomorrow. I ain't trying to mess it up for nobody. But you would go and do and go and do and go and do and go and do. But over time, somebody said, well, I ain't going to worry about all that. It's just another day. And, and it is. And it is. And it is. And it is. But see, sometimes that same vigor, that same zest, that same zeal that you had at one time, it, it begins to lessen just a little bit. Jesus said, your love for me is different. And I want you to know, I've noticed that it's changed. You don't do the same things you used to do with the heart and the spirit that you used to do it with. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Did y'all hear what I just said? He didn't say you're not doing what you used to do. He said, but you don't do what you used to do, and the spirit and the heart that you used to do it with. Mm. But what I'm so grateful for, he just didn't knock me, but he gave them a way to get back on the right path. We got a great church. As I said before, I put our church up against anybody with the level of service. Uh, are we a perfect church? No, no. We serve a perfect God, but we got a group of imperfect people that are designed to strive to be more like him every single day day. But, but this is important for us to be able to make an assessment of, look, uh, for yourself individually <clears throat> and us as a group. Uh, and, and it's important for us to be able to look and see. I said, man, we did this, we did that well. We started connecting with the community more. We're doing that, that. That's all great. That's all. But, but we got to watch that spirit. We got to watch that internal compass. We got to uh, arrest, you know, why is it that I do what I do? Is he my motivator or, or do I do what I do because I don't want to hear brother and sister so-and-so's mouth? Or do I come because I don't want nobody calling me because they haven't seen me? See, sometimes I can do the right thing and believe the right thing, but the spirit behind the thing that I do is not right. Brothers and sisters, it's important for us to be able to assess our motives because there was a time that we were excited about doing the things of God. But notice what the remedy Jesus gives us. He says this, remember therefore, from where you fall. He said, let me tell you, y'all been doing some great stuff. You all are an example. I know, I know Ephesus. I know everything that's going on in the city. And even when Paul came, look, he uh, upset some folks. And, and, and as a result of uh, them teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, look, all of those temple guards and those trinkets and the things and, and the silversmiths and the blacksmith and all of those who were, who were making little idols, look, the business had dried up because you had those who were now converting to Christianity and leaving those idols behind. There was a turmoil and an uproar in the city. But he said, said I, look, I understand what it is that you do, but it's important for me and it's important for you to examine our motives. Why do I do what I do? See, sometimes habit can be this is where I normally go at 1015 on Sunday morning. I can be in the place. I can listen to the word. But see, sometimes the word doesn't penetrate my heart. See, he says, this is how we get it back. This is how we turn things around. Three R's, remember. He says, remember from where you have fallen. Number two, repent. He said, do the first work. Do what you used to do. He says, or else, uh-oh, 
I'll come and remove your lampstand from its place unless you change and repent. Lord have mercy. He says, but this I have for you that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans. He, he begins to talk about uh, one, one of the local groups who, who, who were beginning to take off disciples unto themselves. He said, you're withstanding them. This was a group that embraced Christ. He said, but at the same time, they were living in a way that was contrary to the, to the ways of Jesus Christ. He said, and I'm glad you had withstood them because look, that's not in keeping with my will and my way, but it's important for you all to remember that you need to repent. He says, remember, repent, and return. Notice here, brothers and sisters, it's important for us to understand. You say, well, brother, brother, what's worth remembering? We, we've got to renew our minds and, and set that new focus. We need to renew our relationship that have become strained. Some of our marriages and our relationship with our parents or even our, our siblings. And, and, and we got to remember uh, where we have fallen. Remember how you used to be excited about worship. I can't wait until Sunday morning. There's something about, there was a song, there's something about Sunday morning. He said, but now we just get to the point where we just drag our way in. Well, you know what? You know what? What's going to determine our cup? Who preaching today? Is so-and-so out of town? I don't know. I, I ain't going to get dressed. It's raining. He said, but there was, remember where you were, you were falling. There was a time you used to be excited about doing the things for God. He says, remember how you used to serve with joy. Yeah, I know I'm a T. I know I'm a T. I know where they at, where they at, where the classroom, where before when you first start, man, you were so excited. You could have had one child, but you were teaching like it was a hundred. But over time, see, you can continue to do the tasks. But sometimes I love it's grown cold. He says, we need to renew it. <coughs> Jesus gives us a, rem a remedy in order to be able to get back, to be able to refocus. <clears throat> Remember how nobody had to ask you to get involved. You will find where you can serve. Well, they ain't asked me to do it. Well, we may not have asked you specifically, but you hear the needs of the church every single week. We need somebody to do this. We need somebody to do that. And somebody can volunteer their time to do that. But then you act as if they're not talking to you. You act as if the inquiry is for everybody else. Remember from where you have fallen. He says, he says, notice this, notice this. <clears throat> uh, remember, it didn't matter how long service lasted because you enjoy serving God and worshiping with the saints. There was a time that, 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 look, that even after service is over, there are people on the parking lot an hour later. Why is that? Because you enjoy the fellowship of the saints. You enjoyed worshiping God. That was a part of your experience. But now, as soon as I sit down, I'm looking at my watch and I'm hoping and I'm praying that it's shorter than last week. There were some folk who, who logged on today and they were excited. They said, hey, and, and you know, you know, when we do these virtual services, we about out, not about an hour. Let's run new, go longer than he normally did. Probably will, but we still get out sooner than we normally do. But if you're not careful, you only had that mind with that love. It's grown cold. Remember how you read your Bible and studied your Bible on a regular basis. But guess what? We've allowed distractions, people, places, and things. They have now come in. They crowded out our schedule. And now we don't have time. The only time I pick up the word is when we come to church. And then, oh, and then I got to ask, where are we again? <clears throat> what are we studying this week? Because I haven't I had intimacy with God. Remember when you thought back about where God has brought you from. I know even with me, it used to bring you to tears. What you used to think about, what you used to engage in, how you used to deal with people. But now that you're in Christ, he said, man, the Lord done bought me from a mighty long way. He's bought some of us from addictions of all kinds, drugs and alcohol, uh, you know, gambling, shopping. I didn't think I'd throw that in there. That, 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 he's bought us from a lot. There was a time 
when you were gripped by grace, when you think about that the Lord still accepted you, when you still have people in your life right now, they might even be your kinsmen and your family, they reject you, and you say, he still loved me in spite of all of that, that moves us. It moved us. But now we find ourselves going through, yeah, I know, I'm, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. I, I showed up. Leave me alone. I, I, I put my stuff in the bank. I, I put my stuff, I put, I gave, I, I, you know, I did my, took my communion. I did my five acts of worship. I should be good, brother. You shouldn't be asking for people to do all this. Don't, don't he know people are busy today? It's the only, only way we walk away with that particular mindset is when the love is grown cold. <clears throat> And sometimes you can be performing the service, but if your motive and your heart is not right, Jesus rejects it. Do you hear what he said to this church? I see what you do. I see how you do it. You operate with patience. You operate with perseverance. You operate with faith. You operate with this. He said, and you have not grown weary, but I have this against you. Your motive for me, your passion for me in his way. You got to find a way to get it back. How to get it back? Remember from where you fall. Remember what you used to do. Remember the vigor and the vitality and the work and the labor and the fellowship. I stopped by to tell you, when your intimacy with God seems to shift, let me tell you something. He didn't move. We have allowed the cares of this world We've allowed people, we've allowed associations to get in between me and my relationship with God. You have to get to the point in your living where I won't allow anybody, anything, any job, any association to get between me and my relationship with God. Amen, somebody. Because when you can't work no more, you still need God to preserve you. When you can't shoot hoops no more, you still need God to preserve you. He, he was with me before I started. He's going to be with me through the process. And he's going to be with me even when I can't perform the way I used to perform anymore. See, there's some people in your life, they're only, be, they're only going to love you as long as you can perform the way you used to perform for them. Stop performing and see how the relationship changes. Next up, he says, repent. Metanoid comes from the Greek word metanoid, which means make a change of mind, which ultimately results in a change of action. Turn from sin, feel regret or contrition, <clears throat> not just to feel sorry, but that feeling of guilt will actually change what it is that you're doing. Brothers and sisters, there are some sins that we need to repent of. We need to turn away from pride. We need to turn away from unforgiveness. We need to turn away from fornication and adultery. Yes, even in the church. <clears throat> we need to turn away from pornography or gluttony. I know the Super Bowls tonight. Said, well, you know, is it, isn't it justifiable sometimes? I, I ain't trying to mess up your vibe. We need to stop lying. We need to stop cheating on tests and cheating people. We need to stop stealing time from work. He said, he's he coming after everything this morning. Lord have mercy. There's some things, brothers and sisters, that we honestly need to repent of. One of the biggest sins that's plaguing our churches today <clears throat> is a word called apathy. What does apathy mean, Brother Newt? It's a lack of feeling or emotion. It's a lack of interest or concern. Apathy is the mindset that you hear that there are needs and you're unmoved. The concept is, so what? We need teachers for the Bible school department. So what? We need people to assist with the media ministry. So what? We need volunteers to help with the food distribution. So what? <clears throat> the concept of apathy is hampering many of our churches. And I'm sounding the alarm this morning that some of us have been gripped by apathy. 
And then we get to the point where we justify by not doing anything. I'm here to remind you, brothers and sisters, that's not the spirit of Christ. That's the spirit of Satan. And he's got your mind thinking that it's okay. The gift that you have is not just for you. God has given it to you so you can use it for his glory and his honor. We have to remember that we are all stewards of the things in which God has placed into our care. Your time he's given to you to use for his glory and his honor. Your talents he's given to you for you to use for his glory and his honor. Look, your treasures, your money, your resources, he's given to you for his glory and his honor. Question then on the floor, how are you using those things? Those children he's given to you, he's given them to you so you can raise them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord for his glory and his honor. But you know what? Apathy has set in, brothers and sisters. The lack of interest or the lack of concern. Somebody get it done. They'll figure it out. Do you know what? That's man, that's a mood, that's a mindset, what apathy has set in. And you know what? This is the thing that frustrated Jesus to Christ. This mindset is killing our churches, and we should care when one of our members are hurting. When they hurt, we hurt. We should be excited when the saints experience breakthroughs. When they win in, we win. We should feel an obligation to help and to serve when the needs of others are not being met. We need teachers to teach. We need drivers to drive. We need people to work in various ministries of the church so that bonds can be strengthened and people can be served. Why, brother? Why you, why you keep on going on about working and serving? And I thought you said the budget was okay, but it's not just about the budget. We're not going to get together as a collective body. And the Lord said, well, how much did y'all give? Well, that, that's good. Y'all were over the number that y'all said. What, what, uh, what does that have to do with the way we live? What does that have to do with the way we serve and the spirit with which we serve? Brothers and sisters, don't allow apathy to ruin your relationships. Apathy is killing marriages today. Our spirits need to be renewed. Our spirits need to be revived so that restoration can take place. Let's stop being okay with not doing anything but attending church services. God saved you for more than that. See, we say, I'm a member at the New Haven Church of Christ. No, no, let, let me put it like, you're an attender. <clears throat> See, you can be an attender and still not be in fellowship with God. He said, well, that's just where I go. But are you in fellowship with the body? Are you aiding the body? Are you helping the body? Are you serving the body? Do you know <clears throat> with the diversity of people that we have and, and the different age groups and the different backgrounds and the different cultures, do you know that's why Jesus put outlined in scripture where we have to learn to love and forbear and forgive and overlook and out, don't operate in unforgive. Why? why? Because with all the diversity of people and all the different uh, dynamics that go along in play, in order for the church to survive, we have to have those components. And some of the folks that get on your nerve, they're there to help you to grow. Amen, Walls. Church, we need to repent. And when we do, God will forgive us. God will empower us with strength to serve him out of love and not out of duty. I want you to think about your own personal walk today. I want you to think about, see, some, some of the things we do, <clears throat> we do it more out of law than out of love. But everything we do, it ought to be motivated by love. He said, they will know that we are Christians by our love. But sometimes only with, only the, well, I was there, I cleaned it, I did it, I drove it. I taught it, I did, but see, sometimes we do it more out of duty than we do out of love. Man, when you're doing something out of love, it feels different. 
Man, you, you go to a place or you have an experience at a restaurant or hotel. Say, man, oh, it's our pleasure to serve you. you th th there are some realities that come along and say, man, they, they, they look like they love what they were doing. And, and because they love what they did, it made me feel good about myself. He said, in the concept of brothers and sisters, when we all have the same mind, when we have interactions with each other, we should refresh one another. You say you need a ride? Come on, you better hurry up. Don't, hey, you, you got five minutes. If you're not there, I'm not. What can you talk about? Well, look, I, I, I don't have time. And if you can't, look, you told me that last, this, this. There's a difference between operating out of duty than it is out of love. And see, this is what happened to the church at Ephesus. They had fell in to duty. <clears throat> the passion had waned. The love in and of itself wasn't evident. But guess what? People were being served. <clears throat> they were enduring those who were teaching false doctrine. Get out of here. You don't want the mantra to be. So what? We're high on doctrine, low on love. He said, no, that's got to be a balance of both. We have to maintain the integrity of the scripture, the word of God. But how we do it, Jesus already outlined. We ought to speak the truth in love. Operate in love. Lead with love and kindness and faith and hope and joy. He said, brother, I'm already doing that. Well, brother, and sister, I'm just saying, keep on doing what you're doing. Amen. We just need some more folk who get on board to be able to do that very same thing. But if we just judgment day honest, I believe that's truly a wake up call for many of us. He, then he said, <clears throat> return. Remember where you've fallen from. Because that's some things you used to do, you're not doing anymore. Then he said, repent, change your mind. Nothing happens till you change your mind. And then look, ultimately change our actions. Sometimes you got to work your way into that, that same spirit. I don't feel like doing it. I don't feel like we'll start doing it and then praying about it and then God will change your heart over time. And then he says, you need to return. He says, verse five, remember therefore where you fall and repent, do the first. He said, and do the first work. Do it, <clears throat> do what you did in the beginning and how you did it. See, what's happened over time, we can do the majority of things we did, but some things slip. You say, well, I used to come to all of this, but now I just come to two of those things. Yeah, I used to be in a marriage fellow. I ain't, I, I ain't going. Yeah, I don't, I don't vibe with it. I used to be in sister's, sister's class. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't really, vibe, you know, I got other things to do with my Saturday. You know, I used to go to men's Monday class, but, you know, it's, it's I done worked all day. and I, Just just same thing for all of the brothers who who attend the class and the sister, wherever your priority is, these are where your treasury is, there where your heart be also. Getting back to love some of those things. Give some of those things a try again. Amen. For the cause of Jesus Christ. Look, look, honoring him and what I do, the way I do, and how I do. He's my motivation. But you know what? We got comfortable in what pleases us. I don't feel like it, man. Look, I, I'm just, I, I just, but, but it's not about my feel. He didn't feel like going to the cross, <laughs> but he said, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. We got to take on the mindset of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. He says, go back and do <clears throat> what you used to do. Remember what you fell from. There's some things you used to you don't do anymore. What happened? You allow people to get in the way from you serving your God and the way you want to do it. Don't let the preacher get in the way. Don't let no brothers get in the way. Don't let no sisters get in the way. Amen. Hey, look, why? Because church belongs to Christ. Look, yeah, hey, hey, don't, don't try to bum rush or bogart no way. You, you get your feelings hurt. That, that, that we, because we do have a duty and an operation 
how, how to govern something. It's not just about your way, but me serving. Nobody can stop you from serving. Nobody can stop you from teaching souls with Jesus Christ. Sometimes we just don't want to, or, or, or have I allowed this to come in? And now my schedule's all out of whack and it's hard to get there. And there's a battle because now I begin to prioritize other things and I try to fit church in. No, you know, we prioritize the Lord and we fit everything else around. <clears throat> it takes faith to do that. That's not common in our world. That's not common in our culture, but that's what God is requiring of his people. He said, Ephesus, I want y'all to be different. <clears throat> the spirit in which you operate. When, look, when people have interactions with you all, he said, man, these people are different. Man, do you see, they, they, act like they actually love each other. They don't just go to church with, with each other. He said, well, man, they, they engage with each other. They fellowship even outside. Look, they're, they're really for one another winning. That's all of us taking on the mind of Jesus Christ. And then he says, this is what I don't want you to miss. He says, if you don't do this, if you don't do this, I'm going to come and take away your lampstand. The lampstand re represented the light or the essence or the presence of God. On essence, Jesus said to the church, you'll cease to exist or I'll take my influence away from your body. You have many churches that are operating, but they're operating without the influence of Jesus Christ. Yeah, they got some of Christ's works. He said, but the spirit in which they operate, they're passionless. Some characterize this as the passionless church. They have some works. Passion was gone. Walk in dead, sing dead, pray dead, amen. Eat dead fruit loops in the morning, amen. That, that was dead. That, that ought not be us, amen, somebody. Do we get excited after worship? After service is over, man, the place is so loud and, and it's so loud on the, on, on the parking lot, the neighbors be complaining. That, 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 there's joy, but you know, my joy also ought to exist in the worshiping of my God. I, and we, some of y'all gonna lose y'all boys in the Super Bowl tonight, watch the game. But man, I ought to be as passionate, <clears throat> more passionate for the Lord Jesus Christ. Because half of y'all, your team ain't playing no way, praise God. Uh, neither Ravens next year, Super Bowl, told y'all that. But, but, but listen, the one who does all things well, he deserves, hallelujah, the highest praise. But what's gonna help me get back? You gotta remember you got to be willing to repent and you got to be willing to return because brothers and sisters, we don't want the Lord to come and take away our lampstand because all the exteriors, I'm sure they had a nice building. They had a nice budget. They had nice this, that, and the other. Yep, they, they were in emphasis, looked a certain way, things at multi-ministry church. He said, but their passion for me is missing. I want you to examine yourself, saints. Look at yourself. You said, man, has apathy gripped me? My approach to my relationships, my approach to my marriage, my approach to it. He said, man, has it gripped me? Sometimes it has. What do you do? You have to go back and begin to do what you used to do. The Lord said, return to me. He said, if you don't repent, I'll take away your influence. You all will cease to exist. And this was a message. This was a warning. To the church at Ephesus. Then he says in verse 7, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I'll give the eat of that tree, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. You, if those who have an ear this morning, let him hear <clears throat> what the Spirit is saying to you. I don't know where you are today. Well, you're probably home or somewhere. Some y'all might be driving or something. But uh, <clears throat> we pray that something was able to hit home with this message, we all need a renewal. We all need a revival. We've been living in a pandemic for going on two years. It's a lot that has changed in this world and we're just learning to adjust as God's people. He said, I know things are gonna come. I know the world is growing more secular, but I still need you to be a light for me. I still need you to be the salt for me. I still need you to be willing to stand for me, <clears throat> but I need you to be the light I need you to stand. I need you to be the salt, but I need you to be that passion 
feel people. Realizing how much I love you. Realizing that you appreciate the sacrifice that I made on Calvary. And sometimes through the busyness of life, through many of the distractions that we have, through many of the notifications that we get, the, the, you know, you focus on one thing, a notification comes through, it takes off your whole train of thought. It's not that what you were going to do before, not important, you've been sidetracked. And you know what the reality of many of us, we've had so many things sidetrack us. And we're over to the left, we have drifted. And the Lord has said, we're, look at where you fall. Come back to me. Come back to me. Restore that love that you once had. When Paul first set, turned that city upside down, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. When Timothy was there with you, when John was there with you, and, and, and many suggest that he's writing to another generation who may not have experienced their ministry. Remember, repent, and return. If you don't know Jesus in the parting of your sins, we bid you to get to know him. You come to Jesus by hearing the gospel message. How his son died, he was buried, he rose again the third day according to the scripture. Be willing to believe that same message. Be willing to repent of your sins. With 13, 3 and 5, the Bible says, I tell you, neighbor, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. What did Jesus say there? Repent or perish. Same thing here. He said, repent or you all will cease to exist. That he, God's not playing, y'all. Be willing to make the great confession, the same confession that the unit made, Acts 8, 26 on down to the end of the chapter. He said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. Then Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. Bible says they both went down into the water and Philip baptized him and they both came up out of the water. And that last step is being baptized for the forgiveness of your sin. Why? Well, Jesus commanded it. Mark 16, verse number 16. He said, he that believes and is baptized will be saved. He that believeth not shall be condemned. This is exactly the same message that Jesus commanded the apostles to teach to the whole world. Why y'all teaching this day? It's the same thing he told the apostles to teach. Salvation is in Christ Jesus alone. If you want to be saved today, if you want to be baptized today, we want you to call 203-777-2992. 203-777-2992. We will set the appointment today and have that done for you so you can become added to the body of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> if you're a member of the body of Jesus Christ, we want you to think over your life. Look at your own heart, man, look at the see, man, is there anything in me that needs adjustment so that Christ can be glorified in a greater way? This is our lesson for the day. May God bless you. May God keep you. This is our